thank you all once again. Um, we do have a very exciting panel um, uh, set up today from Microsoft to Mandela, SAP Avanti, and IXPN. And these are very varied disruptors in their own rights in uh, the Nigerian space. So today for about 30 minutes we're going to have um, uh, the top executives tell us more about the disruption, their plans for Nigeria and what we can expect from uh, a disruption point of view. So without further ado, I'll start with Chibuzo. You know, people, when, when they hear SAP, they think um, a lot about back office applications, right? Uh, but, but a lot has changed um, over time. Um, SAP is doing um, a lot in terms of innovation. And apart from uh, back office applications, we are innovating a lot around customer engagement, uh, workforce engagement and supplier um, collaboration as well. So um, talking about customers, for instance, um, the time has come for companies uh, to understand the customer behavior uh, before they, you know, they sell them. So, we have solutions that enables you to understand customer behavior from maybe social media, if they're thinking of stuff to buy and stuff, so that you can productize whatever it is uh, that you want to sell to them. Um, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, yes, um, first of all, Microsoft, we think of ourselves as a platform company. We're not a software company. And um, when it comes to enterprises and how do we get them to the cloud, what we really kind of um, like to understand is that you see enterprises are driven by customer experience. And in us conversing with them or trying to dis have discussions with them, the first thing we tend to talk to them about is how do they engage their customers. We're talking about collaboration and messaging tools. Those are things that you know, we can have in the cloud right now. We talk about how do they empower those that actually work in those organizations themselves. How do you transform your products? Those are the kind of things that we at Microsoft tend to talk about when we talk to enterprises. And, and are you seeing traction? Sorry? Are you seeing traction in that regard? Yes, yes, we are. Um, um, I can talk about our cloud mix today. Out of every, I'm not sure if I should be saying this, but out of every dollar of revenue that we get in Microsoft, about 62% is actually cloud-based products. Um, I think companies understand that if, I mean, the more you modernize, the lower your operating costs, and that is becoming prevalent. So just to give an introduction of um, what Avanti is doing, uh, we are launching our next satellite Islas for in this month, March, and we will be providing complete coverage across Sub-Saharan Africa, which includes Nigeria as well. Every square meter of Nigeria will be covered. And what's the difference that we provide? And we always say that we are complementary to the telcos, the fiber optics, and the LTEs. Um, reason being we start where the fiber ends or there are always regions where that is not accessible for fiber or LTE or for the telcos also and uh, there is a lot of discussion about cloud-based services both from SAP and Microsoft and in order to reach the cloud in the hot phone territories I believe satellite will be a very good option and the new satellite can provide roughly about 40 Mbps of data connectivity anywhere in Nigeria. When I say anywhere in Nigeria, anywhere in Nigeria. So that's the disruption that we are looking out. And uh, World Bank study says that every 10% penetration in broadband connectivity increases the GDP by around 1.3%. So with more broadband technologies deployed, whether it's uh, LTE-based or fiber-based or satellite-based, the economic growth is going to be on the upward turn and data interruptions also is very good. So that's what I will leave my comment with. Yeah, and I understand you're, you're launching your satellite next month? Yes, we are. Yes. We are very excited. We are launching our satellite Hylas 4 Where this from? month in March. Where are you launching from? We are launching from Arrange Space, uh, French Guinea. Okay. That's so, and the satellite should reach the orbital by this month end, and then we do some testing, but we should be operational by uh, July this year to provide broadband services across Sub Saharan Africa.
So Andela is a it's many things, but we think of ourselves as uh, the biggest network of world-class software developers in Nigeria on the continent. Uh, in Nigeria now we have uh, just over 400 employees, of which close to 300 are software developers, many of which are working with companies across the world uh, solving different kinds of problems. Um, I think from my experience just doing this in kind of three and a half years, three years, it is very clear that ultimately software development, uh, programming is a language. You know, most programming languages are just languages. And, and if you can speak or learn a language, then you can be very highly effective in utilizing that language. Uh, I think what has been more interesting to me is the fact that we're seeing a number of people that a few years ago were not in this space actually delivering significant value for customers across the world. And it's interesting to see Nigerians lead teams of engineers that are sitting in San Francisco or New York and not being perceived as being in any way less talented than those people. Uh, so a lot of times I think, I'll just close on this, a lot of times I think we look very insular and we try to say, you know, buy local, make local, everything local. Uh, but in reality, most countries in the world that have gone from being underdeveloped to developed, if you look at, you know, Singapore, Korea, a few other countries like that, uh, they've really become export driven. They've thought about how to serve the world. And as a result, they've created massive value. So I think um, I'm excited to see Nigeria begin to serve the world and create value that the entire world can benefit from. I think there are two sides to that, to, to my response to that question. Um, on the one side, it is, it, it's very unsustainable for everyone to, for, for anyone to create um, sort of like financial asymmetry in a market for a long time. Because what will happen then is somebody else will pay a maybe lower salary, become more competitive, and they'll beat you at the price game. So we're not in a business of trying to price developers out of the market. What we've realized is that the software development market is a global market. Anyone sitting in Calabar, Lagos, Abuja, who has stable internet, has access to probably two million jobs in the US alone. If we do not understand that that person is going to find who will pay them the most and work for that person, then we're mistaken. So my response to that, whenever I hear that feedback is, Nigeria is the only country I've been to where when someone starts a company and you ask them what's their vision, they want to conquer Lagos, they want to conquer the Southwest, they want to conquer Nigeria, they want to be local champions. The average person in Finland or in New York or in San Francisco or in London, when they start building a company and you ask them what's your vision, their vision is to take over the entire world. Yes. So because they have global revenues, they can afford global salaries. And so I think we have to start playing that game as well. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, actually, the connection to Ghana is a kind of a pilot. Um, it has never happened in Africa. This is the first time two African internet exchange points are actually physically interconnected. And we are doing it as a kind of a pilot test to see is there any traffic, is there any content that is relevant to both countries and to explore the opportunities in that. Um, for example, Nigeria has a lot of movies, you just mentioned, Iroko TV and the rest. Some of them that are hosted locally. We want to see our Ghanaians actually reaching out to that content. Ghana become the first choice because um, it's an English speaking country. Uh, we have so much in common with them and it's much closer to us. So it's still in the pilot project. We are still trying to identify the best business model to ensure that the link um, actually remains there. Yes. The, the success is that, yes, we have seen a lot of um, content between the two countries. And um, the, one of the key issues is that, you know, sometimes we, we don't want to open up in Africa. And each country is trying to compete with the other. Um, Nigeria, based on our huge size, you just rightly mentioned, have one out of every five Africans in the, by their 20, uh, 2050 will be a Nigerian. So, based on our current position right now, Nigeria should be the hub 
of internet content in Africa because in terms of population we are number one in terms of content Nollywood uh, music industry in fact in DSTV channels that are running 24 7 um, 70 percent of the African channels are actually Nigerian movies from Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, I mean and the rest so all, what we intend to do is position ourselves to be the regional hub but unfortunately there are some resistance from some of the countries in in the region in Africa to say hey why do you want to be the leading country and you know that's just, this is actually what stifles innovation in Africa because we don't really want to collaborate when you have a good idea someone wants to really um, criticize it bring it down and, and so many other things sorry let me not go into that thank you so from a Microsoft perspective it's, it's it is important to understand that yes Microsoft is a global company um, but I'm Nigeria first so um, I'm going to leave my badge on the table to answer this question. Um, you see, the most important thing is for us to honestly take advantage of the tools that we have. I understand talking to a lot of organizations that not many companies in Nigeria will leap to intelligent products and services immediately. It takes time. I think the first thing is to get our data and um, applications into the cloud. That's the first step. And then the second one is that we should also use the services that we can get in the cloud to basically get ourselves out there. I'll give an example. We do work with a lot of uh, companies that, or entrepreneurs that want to start working and um, they want to put their product out there. One of the first things that they notice is, you know, you can't build all these things on your own. If you go to our cloud or other companies out there, there are a lot of services that will enable you to frog leap. Or we have uh, some companies that work in, uh, in media and entertainment space, for instance. Uh, they've come to us and they've said to us, look, um, we've got all this data. What can we do with it? And what we've been able to do is we've been able to use the services that we have in our Azure cloud, for instance, to frog leap. And I really feel that it is important the companies like Andela and the rest use this services that we have in cloud to basically get themselves out there. Okay, so from, from an SAP uh, perspective, we have something we call SAP Cloud Platform, right? And the idea behind that platform is to you know seek ways to enable entrepreneurs right? to be able to be able to build native apps and be able to um, you know get the reach from a global perspective and on top of that SAP has some uh, CSR activities that we do as well so we have something called the Africa Code Week um, that, that you know it goes around Africa country by country um, it's, it's for it's been on for like five years now where um, young entrepreneurs or developers are being trained uh, by, by experienced developers as well. And there's also a program called Skills for Africa, uh, where SAP is investing uh, a lot uh, to train um, young African talents um, in, in uh, enterprise business applications and being able to, to write applications to better businesses and the likes of people. So let's assume we have an Andela developer sitting in Gambia and wants to use, say, a Microsoft plat cloud-based platform with SAP back office and wants to go on um, the uh, IXP and interchange to transfer content and also use Avanti satellites to connect broadband. <laughs> Why haven't five of you sat down to put the solution together? Is that a fair question? Yeah. Why? And by the way, the Silicon Valley type companies have figured it out. Google does this. Amazon does this. Why haven't figured it out? Let's start with you, uh, Srinath. Very good question, I would say. And that's what we would like to do as well. Uh, our satellite is launching for Nigeria by March and will be active by July. But what I can do is I can cross-reference a similar story that we did in Kenya. Uh, you spoke about the brick, the tablet manufacturer. 
So Avanti, we have our existing satellite that covers the Kenyan market, which is Hylas 2. Avanti partnered with the Kenyan Ministry of ICT government, along with BRIC, also with a local content provider um, who used to manufacture services for the Ministry of ICT and put a job portal called Ajira online. So Avanti provides connectivity. The tablets are from BRIC and the job portal is Azira made by the Ministry of ICT on their bespoke model. So if, if the portal is from Microsoft or SAP, we can always integrate and it. I, so, um, I, I want to join you in, in pushing that question and I guess what I would say is all the data um, from Nigeria, the internet data, we know the bulk of it is not going through the exchange and um, to the global players who are in the cloud and the connectivity, a lot of you are already in the main one data center. So what are you doing to create that connection, that collaboration here? Um, and I think a lot of the audience will also benefit because their businesses are here if we had greater integration of local content and we would be creating more jobs as well as exporting um, like Andela is doing. So I, I want us to spend a little more time on that question. What are we actively doing to drive that collaboration here and that disruption here in Nigeria? Yeah. And to give a quick perspective is that um, they've been talking about cloud services. By the way, Cloud is, is just a physical infrastructure that resides somewhere. And um, if you look at it, Nigeria has, is like the number third or fourth country in the world when it comes to internet consumption. But the data, the cloud services, is, is my concern. Because if you talk about cloud, is the cloud is, is physical infrastructure that rains US dollars in the country where they reside. And unfortunately, Nigeria is just a net importer of content. Because to quickly clarify, just give me a moment to explain, at least to the audience. If you are to divide the internet <clears throat> into two kinds of networks, you have what is called the eyeball networks and the content networks. Eyeball networks are all the networks that we have in Nigeria that provide you internet services. You are eyeballs trying to browse. What are you browsing? Browsing information from content service providers. Content service providers are Google, the Yahoo's, the Microsoft, and all the rest. So. As it is right now, um, I, I like our question because how do we bring such content back into the country? Because all the huge content that we generate here, extremely huge, if I'm to give you for YouTube, for example, over a billion people are browsing every single day. Five hours of uh, video is uploaded every single second. In, in terms of, it's like in, in one day, it's um, like five hours. The entire history of NTA is just um, advertising fourth year's uh, uh, anniversary. Adobe NTA has been running live for the last 40 years, 24-7, would have been uploaded in YouTube just within one single day. So the size of the internet is really huge. But in terms of the revenue that we generate as the third in the world in terms of internet consumption, in, those, in that information is very, very minimal. So we are still importing that content. It's our content, we export it just for it to come back. So at the exchange point, what we're truly, truly, truly focused on is to see how do we bring back the content. And this is where you really reap the benefit because content is the economic engine of the internet. Otherwise, we'll just be a bunch of consumers. He just mentioned Microsoft's revenue, about 65% comes out from cloud services. Cloud service providers, Amazon is worth $700 billion. Google is almost $700 and something billion. Uh, Facebook, $500 billion. They are multi-billion dollars. Some of them, the revenue they generate is more than what we generate in the oil industry. So yeah. they, that's why they said data is the new oil. So, so, so for us, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's how do we bring, as you rightly said, all the Andelas and the rest that are providing services. For example, the Microsoft Cloud Service, yes. we would like to really see them physically present in Nigeria so that we access that data locally. So, right, I think that you know, while we're on that topic, something that is going to eventually come up is where's the talent? Who's going to do all these things? So Microsoft provides Azure, SAP provides a bunch of platforms, free things, and then everyone sits down looking at each other. Right? So right now, from my understanding, uh, companies like Oracle, Microsoft, a few others, they install massive systems for companies, but when it's time to deploy, 
we have to bring people into the country to deploy because we don't have the talent in-house. No, I, I disagree. There's 500 people here with very clever and capable ways of doing that. Very capable. Thank you. Yeah. So we both disagree, yeah. and that's why Andela exists. Right. <laughs> um, so what we're doing is, you know, we, we've helped close to 700 developers learn how to become world-class developers. Well done. We're taking on all of that knowledge, and we're saying, how do we make that into 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million? So last year, we actually partnered with Google. Speaking of partnerships, we partnered with Google. We ran a program that ended up creating 1,000 Android developers here in Nigeria, well done. of which 100 were certified by Google. Um, what I expect to see is that over the next five, ten years, 90% of all the people that are you know, using the cloud services from all these platforms will be from Andela programs. And so Great. we are collaborating already. We'll hold, we'll hold you accountable. So to, um, we've, we've come to the end of the panel session. I think for me the top use case here is this time next year we will be testing an Andela employee using either Microsoft or SAP platform in the cloud and operating over Avanti and the IXPN exchange. And we have over 500 witnesses here to hold them accountable. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you listening. Thank you.